Hey everybody, welcome back to another exciting episode, another edition of A Week in Geekdom here on YouTube. Geo here, and today we're talking goodbye, my rose garden. I want to give a massive shout out to the folks at Seven Seas Entertainment for making this manga review possible. They were gracious enough to send me a copy so that I could review it on the channel for you guys. So what exactly is goodbye, my rose garden? Well, basically, this is a romance period piece set in England in the early 90s. In this story, we are following a Japanese maid called Hanako as she travels to England looking for her favorite author because she is a massive bookworm and wants to write novels of her own and wants to venture into that world of literature. And she is employed by a young noblewoman called Alice. Now, the plot twist for this series, or the hook that people don't see coming, because I had no idea, is that as the two become friendly with each other, you know, it's a fairly standard relationship between the noblewoman and her maids and, and servants and all that stuff, but they grow closer, there's a friendship that forms. There is a request on Alice's part for Hanako to kill her. I didn't see that coming. I had no idea and I was intrigued. I'm like, okay, you got me from that setup alone. You see the story goes more in depth about what it's it's like to have feelings that are not aligned with the standard of the time. The two characters obviously share romantic feelings for each other, but the time period simply doesn't allow them to just openly admit it and not be critiqued. So I do like that aspect of the book that it goes into that territory and it gives us something different. Obviously the series is set in the early 1900s and we're in 2020. Not a lot has changed and yet a lot has changed if you catch my drift. When the story begins, Hanako is following in the footsteps of her favorite writer, Victor Franks, and she is desperately trying to meet him, but of course is turned down because of her social status, her gender, facing the sexism of the time. Of course, these characters foolishly questioning her ability just because she's a woman and instead advising her at a bookstore to, uh, you know, continue on with her life and do something else and, and be something else, but that's not what she wants. Frank's material has allowed her to find the courage to follow her own dreams and wanting to be an author. Of course, Alice happens to be in the library and picks this up and offers a helping hand in uh, employing her as her maid and sort of jump-starting this adventure for this book. I like uh, the character of Hanako. She is uh, wholesome, she is a sweetheart and wants to do good. She's a good soul and is wanting not only to do the best of her abilities working as a maid for the character of Alice, but she wants to be a writer and she wants to meet her favorite author and wants to do a lot of things. And when she's paired with this noble woman, her life sort of turns upside down. We have the character of Alice who doesn't, you know, she's sort of an enigma as you start reading. And once you get past that big hook that I just revealed about uh, her wanting to die, it doesn't give you all the answers, but as you continue reading, it starts peeling off the layers of the story and you start to realize that it's a little bit more complex than that. With characters basically defying the norm of that time and doing things their own way while also facing the backlash of, you know, the, the public of that time. The story and art are done by Dr. Pepperco which I will apologize because it is the first time I'm hearing of this mangaka, but the art is simply stunning. I loved it. There's so much attention to detail to the character expressions, to the eyes, to the hair, to the settings. Of course, the Rose Garden itself that Alice keeps is very beautiful. Uh, all the scenery, setting it in England gives you an opportunity to do uh, 
you know, you do your homework and you want to bring your A game. And if you're going to do a series set in the early 1900s, the art has to reflect the beauty of the architecture, the, the gardens, all the stores, the clothing, the time period has to match. It's going to be different than if you do a series in another country, if you do a series in Japan and all that stuff. So on that aspect, the art, just A plus material, in, in my honest opinion, I really enjoyed it. It's fantastic. The character designs are easy to identify, look, look at, and enjoy. Everybody's distinct and beautiful in their own right. And the character of Hanako is probably my favorite from the story, simply because of her good-natured spirit and how she wants to do good. She has this conundrum that presents itself with Alice, and she wants to figure out how she can fix that. She agrees and, and sort of develops this uh, admiration and this... Uh, blossoming romance I guess with the character of Alice but she wants to fix things for the better meanwhile the character of Alice you see this pain and resentment and tragedy to her and at first you're thinking is this some silly request she she's wanting to die but as you keep reading you start finding out more and more about her and the character suddenly opens up and you get a feel for what she's going through which I thought was really well done and I, I genuinely enjoyed reading this first chapter or this first volume I should say and I'm very much looking forward to reading more of the series as the subsequent volumes come out. Overall what did I think of Goodbye My Rose Garden? Now I gotta say this book has character to it. All the individuals presented in the story they're they're real they don't seem like exaggerated caricatures you have these two wonderful characters that are going through totally different experiences even though Alice is a young woman she's still experiencing grief and depression and tragedy and to her the character of Hanako seems like uh, an escape of sorts and for Hanako she sees that inspiration and of course the two meeting form a relationship and that can change the outlook on things which reminds me of situations that we might have with individuals where one meeting could change a person's outlook on life if it's for the better so I, I get it and I love the concept behind this and these two characters from opposite sides of the world meeting and completely disregarding the whole uh, hierarchy of uh, noble English woman and uh, Japanese uh, maid also the story does tackle prejudice and racism in very interesting ways especially with the dialogue and the the way nobles referred to uh, the maids and all that stuff i thought it was really interesting and i was not expecting that i thought the story was going to be a little bit more straightforward with what it was doing but for a first volume it's very good and i'm very much looking forward like i said earlier to the rest of the story and see how the characters develop uh, there is a lot to enjoy about this book if you want to go for um, the romance aspect or the period piece like I've mentioned. There's a lot to like in this book. Hopefully I've intrigued you enough that you want to read it. I didn't want to spoil everything. I just told you sort of the bare bones aspect. But overall I, I really enjoyed it and I wholeheartedly recommend it if you want to check out something different. Thank you everybody for tuning in. As always, thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, being a part of what we can keep them here on YouTube. It really does mean a ton. We passed the 2,000 subscribers as of this video, so I'm super excited about that. I, I didn't think I could do it, but I, I, I gotta thank everybody. Uh, it, it does mean the whole world to me. I know it's a small number compared to a lot of people, but for me, it does mean a lot, and I am super excited about the future of this channel and for it to continue growing. Of course, a massive thank you to the folks at Seven Seas Entertainment for making this video and a whole bunch of other manga reviews that I've done for making them possible. I, I'm 
I'm always humbled and flattered that I get to do this. Uh, thank you, uh, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, remember to like, comment, subscribe, hit the little bell icon here on the channel so you know when new videos pop up. What else? I'm probably rambling. I'm sorry. Follow Geo's Arcade. I make a, I made a second YouTube, which is all about video games. So if you want to check that out, link in the description below as well. And that's about it. Yeah, I've got to go. Thank you, everybody. I will catch all of you on our next video.